Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the Married with Children documentary, The Ladies of Married with Children, as we look back over the 11 seasons of guest actresses who have appeared in Married with Children. Uh, Married with Children has laid the foundations for some actresses to make their breakthrough in terms of Hollywood. Uh, in terms of everyone from Tiffany Thiessen to Denise Richards, uh, all got their first opportunity in Marry With Children. And for this week's episode, we go to season 10. We go to episode 23. Uh, this episode was called Enemies. It was actually a pilot produced by Marry With Children. It aired on April the 14th, 1996. And one of the actresses in that episode was Terry Ivins, and she played the role of Maria. I uh, suppose, first of all, Terry, uh, to be associated with Marry With Children, such an iconic TV show, comedy show, uh, which was famous and which made Fox famous in terms of was the launching pad of the Fox or the channel in terms of the mm -hmm. 80s and the 90s. I suppose season 10, I suppose by that stage, it was a cult phenomenon. And for you to be part of that series, uh, what does it mean to you in terms of your career? Oh, well, it's a staple. I think it's a rite of passage. Like you said, there's a grocery list of not only females, but, you know, all actors that have guest starred on that show. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting because most people, I don't know uh, if they know that Married with Children was started off as a flip side to the Cosby show. Yeah. And, and my, my episode, Enemies, was a uh, flip of the iconic Friends. Yes. So yeah. they had they had intended that, and we shot it as a pilot. Like we did a whole intro, the opening titles. I played the Courtney Cox, and I had a brother, um, uh, Matt Berlehi, uh, who's now on Cobra Kai. Uh, and so we were based off of friends. That's why there were six, but we were a little ahead of our time. It, this was before reality television and yeah. the network thought that having uh, six people who were quote enemies and that were always trying to throw each other under the bus, so to say, set each other aflame was not going to be what America wanted to watch. <laughs> and then came reality television. <laughs> <laughs> And I suppose that Maria, so you were a, a potentially auditioning for a new sort of show in terms of that sort of pilot as well. And I suppose it was produced by, did you take it as an episode of Married with Children or did your talent agent said to you, this is a pilot of a new show that has been launched on the, the back of Married with Children. So did, was there sort of great excitement there, I suppose, thinking that if this pilot was a huge success, you could be looking at two, possibly three seasons, or did you think of it as just that? one episode or no we uh we were a tv show we were we negotiated for pilot fees and for what we would make weekly if it got picked up and what a lot of people well i don't know anyone that would really know this unless you were a part of this small little group is that fox had guaranteed uh, the producers of Married with Children in their original contracts that they were guaranteed another show and so okay. They, so they came up with this one going, this is it. They're going to love it. Like, this is the show that's going to go. In fact, like, um, a lot of our talk shows, like Entertainment Tonight and uh, whoever was in back then, they slated us as the mm -hmm. pilot to beat, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of like the... Uh, Sports Illustrated cover, like, you know, we, we were the only one that probably didn't get picked up that year. Uh, so, yeah, we were... Uh, quite disappointed when we found out we wouldn't get picked up because we were led in with all the excitement and with uh if you notice on that episode we had Alan Thicke who was yeah. huge back in the 90s right to help us push yeah. and we had uh Ron Howard's mom and dad Pearl and Rance Howard who are iconic uh, actors in their own right uh, that were in our episode. So they used the big push, let alone the original cast of, of Married with Children, uh, to lead us in to being not just a TV show, but to be the next big success. So it was quite eye opening, uh, you know, big bite of humble pie to realize, yeah, they're saying America doesn't want to see a bunch of people being mean to each other. And I wish that was true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Maria, do you think there was a question at the time that maybe the audience thought, 
were tuning in to Marry with Children and thought, oh, this is a show now that's trying to, uh, says they're going to weigh out Marry with Children and this is going to be a new sort of show from the producers uh, that's going to take over. This is going to be the sort of final season. Did you think maybe the audience, the diehard Marry with Children core sort of audience were sort of worried when they saw the new pilot coming out that they saw, well, they might be finishing Marry with Children now and this is uh, this is going to be what's going to be taking over from it. And maybe there was a bit of backlash from the diehard fans that maybe didn't want the series tinned. No, I really don't. That's a great question. Uh, but we have to remember that was, what did you say, it was 96? So yeah. we didn't have internet. There was yeah. no iPhones and smartphones. There was no, I mean, we had the TV guide and we had, you know, um, our, you know, um, uh, our, our publicity rags, whatever you want to call them, uh, that used to infiltrate everything, right? People Magazine was like the biggest thing. And uh, so it was just a different climate. And we didn't even know that we would be an episode of All My Children. We were truly our own entity as enemies. And it was well after that they decided to use the episode as a, or use the pilot okay. as an episode. Oh. Nice move. Did my brother cheat on you again? Yes. Tom and I are in the middle of the biggest fight we've had since yesterday. And why are you bothering to wax your legs? Don't they teach you anything at night school? If Tom and I make up, we'll end up in bed and he'll want smooth legs. If we break up, I'll end up in bed with somebody else and he'll want smooth legs. So either way, waxing is the key to my happiness. <laughs> ah, well, good evening, ladies. You know, after a long, hard day, there's nothing like a relaxing shower. Jackson, why do you need a shower? You don't work. I get just as dirty watching TV as you do working. Sure, now that you've unscrambled the porn channel. <laughs> <laughs> At least I... I have a sex life. Uh, which reminds me, you're out of liquid soap. Okay, so you actually aired on your own and you didn't air under the married with children sort of bracket. No, 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 we aired. No, we aired. When we finally did air, we aired as an episode of All My Children, but that was not what was intended. Okay. Okay. And it wasn't like, oh, if we don't get picked up, then we'll be an episode. We were our own show with like i'm saying with opening titles that we shot and all of that fun stuff yeah and i suppose you mentioned the sort of uh friends team going through it and you probably had the tom character that was based around matt leblanc's character sort of joey as sort of uh such uh in terms of friends and then nicolo erkert uh, i suppose she was a mixture maybe of a cross between a kelly bundy and a sort of a, a jennifer aniston that she was more out there that rather than sort of uh, Jennifer Aniston, the sort of Shannon character. And then probably you were probably the most sort of refined uh, person on the uh, on that episode. It was very much the three of you that sort of took center stage. And maybe was it a case that you tried to fit uh, too much into a 20, 24 minute bracket? You know, it's one of those things that you, I, I think it was probably more political than any yeah. of us actors would ever, ever know. You know, uh, politics in Hollywood are gigantic. Okay. And to, I, to be, I always think of it as, it's really been a miracle that they've allowed me to continue to play in this amazing playground of make-believe because you never know what side of the politics is the right side. So you need to be true to yourself to be able to wake up every morning and look yourself in the mirror. And I think if you use that as a precursor in this Hollywood, you know, I mean, if you think about it, we are a bunch of deceivers, right? If we can make you cry or we can make you laugh, we're telling stories, fictitious or based on, right? So if we can, if we can uh, transform your emotions, wherever you're sitting in your living room uh, and make you feel and have compassion or make you scared or, you know, uh, 
we're doing it basically as because we're deceiving you right yeah. the, the the oscar goes to the best deceiver right and if you look at it in that big in that big brush which we really shouldn't look at things in a big brush but if we look at it in a big brush we go wow you know there's a lot of things that are more important than entertainment but entertainment has this way of uh ebbing and flowing through whatever the politics are of the times. So to know what side of it to be on is, you know, it's a crapshoot or, you know, a roll of the dice. And I think in this particular case with Enemies being a TV series, it was a political decision. It wasn't based on that the show wasn't good. I mean, outside of the one comment that I've heard that, you know, nobody wants to watch or America doesn't want to watch a bunch of people being mean to each other, which is what's so funny. <laughs> America <laughs> proved them wrong. This would have been an event. You know what? They should probably Very reboot it. Since they're going to reboot, yeah, reboot Friends, they yeah. should probably reboot Enemies because it never really did. So it could be a great phenomenon now. <laughs> and I suppose when you see uh, what has come in the sort of the, the latter age of the where this sort of decade as such in terms of Charlie Sheen's show two and a half main anger management yeah. is really probably more relevant to the time enemies now if it will start to launch now as well it, it sort of fits into that sort of mold of what the, the 19, 20 year old uh, young adolescent uh, is more inclined to watch uh, the those types of shows uh, these days probably but the uh, worry I would the hope so but like if you think about it you know we got caught you no know, in I think a good thing um mm -hmm. but we got caught in this this tide pool uh because you look at it like some of her historic American television like all in the family with Archie Bunker and you know that would never fly today that would be so not pc right people would be up in arms because you look at the reboot of roseanne and how she made one tweet and boom she's gone right yeah uh, so you can see how entertainment uh i don't know if they they i can't say that entertainment holds people to a higher standard i think it's kind of double standard but uh you know the political climate definitely plays a huge, powerful hand on what movies uh, get released in an, in uh, a year. Uh, there's movies that I know of that they go, oh, we love that, but this is not the time. It's too volatile. We need to wait. So, I mean, I would, I would hope that all these decisions from a political standpoint from our executives, uh, our studio heads that have the power, that they would take the temperature of our world, uh, not to um, stir up more animosity, because we definitely don't need that to, in today's atmosphere, but maybe stir up hope and laughter and joy, because in this world of COVID, I think joy and laughter is something that needs to be stirred up in all of us. And I suppose, uh, Terry, uh, my next question now, I normally ask the uh, guest actress what was it like appearing uh, on a set of Married with Children, but I'm going to start, I have to start to differ for you because you were actually, this was your main set, you were the main actors in this sort of show, and the, uh, uh, the likes of Ed O'Neill, Ted McGinley, they were guest starring, they were the ones arriving on set making the guest episode. So what was it like uh, when you heard out that these uh, cast, a few of the cast members from Married with Children would be making a, a guest appearance on your show, and did you actually come across them, or did you you see them at the time when you were shooting the pilot oh yeah no we yeah we were in fact um i i forget about this story but uh i actually wasn't the first maria cast they okay. casted they casted another actress who i cannot remember her name okay. uh and uh, they walked her out the back door while they drove me in on a golf court a golf cart on okay. set and um Christina she Applegate. Been too happy. <laughs> no, I'm sure this actress was horrified. Probably only yes. happy because we didn't get picked up. But uh, for whatever reason, a uh, political reason, she yeah. was uh, let go, and I was brought in. And Christina Applegate, they they had been rehearsing already all day, yeah. so she went and got Starbucks for all of us so that we could start from the top with me and do a rundown of everything. And I had to play catch up because they'd already been in rehearsals for a week. 
Okay. And so that's an interesting thing that people don't, you know, we didn't know. So in terms of that, so Maria, you weren't the first person cast for the uh, Terry for the role of Maria. So it was a, a sort of a late notice from, had you originally auditioned for the role, heard the news that you didn't get it, and then probably were, were on a sort of wait list or didn't expect to hear anything. It was a last minute call from your talent agent, like, listen, they've, uh, they want to recast uh, Maria, the, whatever the main actress is not working out. Uh, can you, are you available at, at short notice? Was it very oh much like that? Yeah, I love this question. You're bringing back so much great memories for me. Uh, I actually was going to quit the business. I had uh, reached a point where the rejection level, and I've been working, uh, and anyone can look at my IMDb to see a host of, uh, you know, my history of, of work in Hollywood. But I, in 96, um, I was going all the way, getting so close on things that I really wanted and then not getting them. And as anyone would know, when you go into multiple job interviews and you hear you don't get the job, your nerves and you, you know, start to work up. And mine were getting the best of me to where I was going in for pilot season and my hand would be shaking when holding the paper yeah. because I just was already in this mode of fear of rejection right? Fear, fear of failure. And, and that's after having a lot of success. Uh, and so I had gone to some uh, interview uh, on Friday and uh, the assistant that worked for my manager, uh, who actually was my mother at the time, nobody knew it was my mother. I always called her okay. pretty woman. And uh, I called her after the interview. She's like, oh, it's here. How did it go? And I'm like, pretty lady. And it's not good. I literally was like ready to cry and I'm shaking while I'm in the meeting. I'm never going to get hired like that. I think I need to stop and quit because I'm going to sabotage my career. So the, my mother, the assistant said, you know what? Um, I, I hear what you're saying. I think that if you, you need to take the weekend, if you want to quit, then I think you should call your manager, Bo. I think she should call Bo on Monday morning and then have this with her, but at least sit for the weekend and, you know, we're a praying family. So she's like, and pray about it if this is what you're supposed to do. And, and, uh, but she heard me because I, it was not good. And, uh, Saturday came and, uh, my, ma my manager, Bo, called and said, like you had said, uh, hey, Terry, they want to see you. There's a job that came up. They're not happy with whom they casted. They're requesting you. They want you to come in and read for network, which was like 35 people in a small room. They want you to come in and read for network tomorrow, which was Sunday. And yeah. nothing ever happens on Sunday. Sunday's our true day off in Hollywood, you know? at least it used to be, but because I was already thinking of quitting and because, you know, a lot of the world practices Sundays being the Sabbath and whatnot and the whole thing of like, wow, I mean, maybe this is a God thing. I decided, you know what, I'll go one more because right. of the situation. So I went in on a Sunday to Sony studios, the, the big lot and uh, at Culver city and drove in. Nobody was there. Uh, I, my panic attacks and my fear of rejection hadn't evaded me. Uh, and somehow with these new lines, and these new scenes that I had to learn overnight, I walked in and in front of 35 executives, all just staring at me by myself, right? With a reader off page, not like I was with the other actors. Uh, I managed to finish the scene. I don't even remember if they were laughing or not. I just, as soon as it was over, I ran out of that room. I, and I was like probably halfway down the stairs trying to get out of the building. And uh, the executive producer or somebody chased me down and said, Terry, 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 no, the EP wants to see you. They want to see you. Please don't leave yet. Come back upstairs. So, you know, I'm like, oh my God. So I come back up. The EP says, Terry, why don't you take my office? Sit in my office. I want you to learn. You need to read the script and learn all the lines. Start start working on it. We're going to call your manager and, and begin negotiating your contract. And I'm like, what? And they're like, we, the network, everyone wants you. I mean, that happened like that. Like that, that doesn't happen. It's never happened since. So I went and sat in the executive producer's office at his desk. They're like, can okay. we bring you anything to eat? You know, and I, you know, I'm a kid. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, what do you got? You know, and I'm reading the lines. So we only had beepers back then. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so now my beeper's going off. And I'm like, uh, my manager is calling me. May I use your phone? They're like, Terry, use whatever you'd like. So I call my manager and she's like, what the hell are you doing? Get out of his office. I cannot negotiate for you when you're sitting at his desk. <laughs> so I, I, I left. And uh, the next day I came back. I forget how it went. I... And actually, you know what? I Now that I'm re recalling, I may have left on that Sunday and had to come back on Monday. Something had happened where I had to leave. And as they were finishing negotiating, which took hours, I went to the commissary. It had to be a Monday because everyone was back to work. Well, at the time they were filming on Sony Lot, um, uh, Show Me the Money. What was that? Uh, yeah. Jimmy Morgan, Jerry Maguire. Okay. So Tom, Tom Cruise was there and um, all filming. And uh, a friend of mine that I had done a TV series with, with that was canceled called Medicine Ball, Donald Logue, uh, who he's on uh, Gotham now. Uh, yeah, he was, as he, well, yeah. He played Bob Sugar on yeah. uh, Jerry Maguire. Well, I had already worked with him and knew him very well. Very well. So I'm in the commissary. And also, I'd already lost a job called... Uh, uh, store, store, stormtrooper, starship. To, gosh, what was that? It was an alien movie. And Denise Richards, who you mentioned, oh, she yes. got the part, she got yes. the part that I wanted in this movie. Okay. So you can see how all this. I the was like, oh my god, yeah, yeah. Right. So here I am at the commissary lot, waiting as they're negotiating a deal for me, and all of a sudden, eyes come over my head, and and. I get picked up and I'm swung around in a circle. And then I hear, you know, somebody say, she's going to throw up, say hi, Terry. And oh my God. And all, all these different voices. And it's Denise Richards. It's Donal Logue. And um, gosh, there's another one that I'd worked with, did a movie called um, uh, Executive. Anyways. Um, and so he, he was, he hasn't worked in a long time. Another comedian from SNL. And he was there and they were all, working on uh jerry Maguire and on starship troopers and uh so i told donald what i was doing there and uh he was like my god well come wait in my trailer and let's hang out and catch up so i'm literally in donald Logue's trailer while he's working opposite tom cruise right <laughs> with denise richards hanging in the doorway and we're all catching up as i'm waiting to see if they're negotiating my contract and if we can oh, actually reach so a deal. Cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And I suppose Terry, so in terms of the, the cast members that uh, pilot episode, uh, Nicole Eggert, uh, you mentioned uh, the character who played uh, Tom as well. You didn't really know. So you, you got the news Sunday. So you arrived Monday and you, you were like, hey, we're shooting the pilot and here's your fellow sort of cast members. So you would probably have no idea walking in who was cast, had you? Right. Yeah, they were already cast. I'm sure they were scared because, you know, usually somebody doesn't get recast in the middle of shooting a pilot. I mean, it does, it has happened, but it's very rare. Uh, yeah, uh, Chris Young, uh, he's a Tony Award winning actor. He was on that episode. He was the blonde, right? I always okay. think of him as being a, uh, you know, the, the ditzy after character from Friends. Um, but yeah, it's a, I don't know, you, it's just so, so fun. The question is that you're asking me, I haven't thought about these things, but you know, to repeat it again for you really shows, right? Just the vast difference in how Hollywood, there is no one way to have your dreams come true in Hollywood and everybody's dreams are different or, you know, the, how they're ushered in. I don't think anyone has the same story twice. Yeah. And I suppose, uh, Terry, uh, before I let you go, I have one sort of final question now. Uh, time, I'm afraid, is caught up on us. Uh, let's pretend there was a Married with Children encyclopedia, a sort of a dictionary as such. And they put your character, Maria, into that encyclopedia and dictionary. And your agent, your talent agent, got on and said to you, look, they're doing a Married with Children encyclopedia of uh, episodes of Married with Children. They put your character, Maria, into the encyclopedia. They've left two blank sentences underneath her in terms of her description. Uh, they've asked you, to, uh, Terry Ivans, having portrayed the role as Maria, 
Uh, what was she like? Uh, what would you like those two sentences to read to describe her? Ooh. Ooh. Probably something like uh, Maria intended to be the glue that held her friends together ended up being the gum stuck at the bottom of her shoe. <laughs> Wow, wow, such a cliche there. Uh, Terry Ivans, an absolute pleasure talking to you today Thank as we you. relive uh, season 10, episode 23 of Married with Children, remembering your role of uh, playing Maria in the pilot show, Enemies. Uh, no doubt uh, you were a victim of uh, time and victim of uh, politi politics. And uh, me speaking, I would really love to see that reboot on us, like Netflix right? or something or something like that. I say we'll go down with treat. Now we all need comedy humor in this current uh, global yeah. pandemic. Uh, uh, a good retro 80s, 90s comic uh, would be, especially when they're rebooting the likes of Saved by the Bell and Fresh Prince of Bel Air and all these sorts of shows that would definitely fit with the times. Uh, I Terry, just, uh, I just yeah. get start on the reboot of Punky Brewster talking about that time period. They're, they brought that back, and I just did that at the end of the last year. <laughs> Terry Ivans, uh, for me, uh, Jim Conlon, an absolute pleasure talking to you today you to so relive, much. relive your memories of uh, playing Maria. And uh, once this is all over, uh, no doubt you'll be hanging in the movie lot uh, with Denise Richards and, and Tom Cruise uh, once more. But for the moment, uh, Terry Ivans, uh, good day to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.